What's good, YouTube land? The Weird Collector here. It's time for a toy so good it'll make you think you're seeing double. Uh, it's it's Earthrise Double Dealer. And here's his box. Leader class double dealer. Now that's the only the second leader in Earthrise that isn't a straight re-release from Siege. <laughs> but there's that shot. There's the picture. Here's a action shot of Double Dealer. Do 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 do. I think yeah, that's Galvatron there. I can't believe that's Galvatron. Who's gonna be in the Studio Series? Because they're moving the Studio Series from movie figures to uh. Well, from Bayformers to 1986 movie toys. Uh, on the bottom, you got nothing much. On the back, just your obligatory product shots. So, here is Double Dealer. And now, I have them in this pose because this is the pose he's packaged in. I wish I was joking, but it's a lot better than Optimus is just wide-legged, oh, kind of thrusting pose, but yeah, this right there, that's how he's packaged. It's kind of hilarious because he's, he's doing the uh, gorilla arms, which thankfully you don't have to do. Just set his arms right. And there you go. No more natural pose. <laughs> Ugh. So I'm sitting here with a modern, classically styled G1 Acura Double Dealer. Who really thought this was going to happen in 2020? Well, nobody, because freaking Earthrise has gone to some pretty crazy places. And it will continue continue to get crazy, er, in Kingdom, with some of the stuff that's been uh, leaked. But oh, I forgot to. Ah, oh, damn. Where are they? Oh wait, they're in my sound blaster. Oh, I'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, give me a shot of the head. Nice, kind of, uh, I don't know what shade of blue this is, but, <sighs> all right. And it's nice to have a leader class that's actually leader class, that's not Voyager with a giant accessory pack, although he is basically the same scale as his original Generations Thrilling 30 incarnation if you know if you ignore the back mounted cannon there they're basically head to head so a leader in 2020 is just a voyager in uh whatever year this guy came out whoa 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 whoa, whoa. 2015 13 something like that and this guy's well this guy's got quality on his side with much better plastic than this guy. But this guy this guy still has a few faults that I'll mention throughout the video, but this guy he's got light piping. It's something. I mean, he's not the best figure. Like playing from the Blitzwing body type, it's like he's okay at best. Mm -hmm. But this guy, let's talk about this guy. Also, for comparison, here's Voyager Snapdragon, who's about a head taller, shorter. He's a head shorter. They kind of both have beast-like alt modes. So, uh, well, <laughs> I'm trying to think of a starting point. What's up with Double Dealer? Well, I'm glad you asked. 
See, he, he lives up to his name in every single way possible. So he's an arms dealer slash mercenary for hire. Appropriate shirt, huh? And he, fi he fights for anyone who is willing to pay him or somebody who is willing to pay him the most. So he has that meaning he has Autobot and Decepticon symbols, depending on who's paying him at the time. Very similar to, in a way, to animated Swindle, or I guess Swindle is a, similar to this guy, although Swindle never actually fought for the Autobots, but... Yep, you have your options, very much like uh, Jetfire from Siege, only you have two of them now. Ugh. And uh, yeah, you can choose your particular flavor, where you whether you uh, you think the Autobots paid more or you like the Decepticons more. But also, what I like about this guy, there's no there's no hint to what one of his alt modes is, because you can see the wheels, so it's kind of like it's kind of obvious he'll turn into something vehicular, but there's nothing on his on the front of him. That indicates what his second alt mode might be. Because not only is this guy a triple changer, but he's also a double power master. At least the original toy was. But they've 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 done their best to incorporate that in a modern setting, as we'll see slowly. So uh, articulation wise first. Actually, talk detail. There's a lot of detail. Your usual molded in stuff. All the uh, G1 stickers that have now become molded in detail. Nice bits of blue, hints of red and uh, slightly uh, pale purple. Oh, with uh, not a lot, but some gray. Like not enough of it to really be annoying, but just just a tap, just a tiny bit of it. Along with some nice black. Uh, actually, fun, funny note, that uh, sort of engine grill there is actually... A, we'll get to it when we get to gimmicks. But it's actually a leftover from one of his uh, Power Masters. It's the engine of his former Power Master uh, knock. Which is kind of a nice touch. It's just it's not even molded in detail anymore. It's it's actually just on a five millimeter peg. It's nice that they try to incorporate the Power Master ideas, and we'll bring we'll talk about that more in a bit. So yeah, articulation wise, head is on a ball joint. You can get some waggle, not much, and some up and down, but it's like there's a good amount of up and down. Not a lot, but and but you can go almost all the way around. His head kind of gets stopped by this thing, which is you can put in front of his face if you want. But that's there for reasons we'll get to in alt modes. Shoulders do that really unfortunate thing where they go lower. Than their visual position when you move them forward. They can do a full 360, but like the joints are a little too low, in my opinion. Very sim uh, same thing as that uh, uh, Combiner Wars Megatron, which is kind of one of the reasons why I never picked up him or the uh, Armada repaint slash remold. Uh, you can go all the way out. Like that. You can do a uh, bicep swivel on a mushroom peg. He's got double hinged elbows. A one unfortunate thing on this copy, the top elbow, you'll see it when you're holding weapons, the top elbow is a bit too weak to hold up weapons on both sides, unfortunately. Because he, he can get a really nice tight curl, but 
hold he tends to uh drop a weapon when he when he tries to hold them uh as as seen before there is a wrist swivel along with a transformation joint which we'll get to in that mode you can also break transformation if you want to get a full outward sort of butterfly joint if you really want to do something like like this and you feel like you need that much extra range you can you can do that or you can do the other transformation joint no yeah you can do the other transformation joint if you want and just go even go all the way but it does make it look a bit awkward and also there's the other hint there's the hint of what his other mode is will it tab back in well it's actually not tabbing it's just kind of friction then so like, it's actually a lot easier to move that joint than that joint because that joint freaking hard locks into place uh waist swivel nice and free looks good the only ratchet joints on this guy are his, for are his hips so they can go all the way forward and a kind of much softer i don't even know if they're no I don't, there might be ratching but it's really no it sounds like just a friction joint but you can go all the way out you do have your thigh swivel only about that much range unfortunately you do have uh just under 90 degrees of knee bend but it's, it's low enough that it kind of looks like it's doing something you also have due to transformation a swivel below the knee and when it comes to the feet you've got an inward ankle tilt which is a massive plank like that's insane like he could stand properly he could do this due to due to the joints he can do that and you also have for transformation the back of his foot can hinge down which eh, might be good for some poses not 100 percent sure so posability wise he also has a square hole in his butt he doesn't really have a tamashi uh stage port so i guess he's not mm, maybe one of his other modes but uh possibility wise it's pretty good it's it's uh the the legs are unfortunately mm, feel kind of limited and honestly he does feel a little bit rattly given how many like holes and there are in here i wish this joint like clicked locked into place just because i feel like it's way too easy to do that like if that locked into place that would make it feel a lot better and if they had filled up these gaps the gaps in the uh backs of the forearms oh yeah i didn't he also can go that way his arm can go all the way back to do if you want to do that for some reason but it's it's the little little like he's solid but it's a little bit of rattly and a little bit of a little bit of disconcern i'm like I, I wish but you know there was a little bit more but i don't know maybe the budget couldn't handle it with all the other stuff so We've got a few, we've got some gimmicks in robot mode. First off, to homage the Power Master, you can, and be, do a transformation, you can uh, flip this, the chest panel down, and you can also rotate it. And if you put it back, it doesn't actually tab in anywhere, but also this, the engine block, it's just on that peg. So theoretically, you could put anything with a five millimeter port right there, and also, any you could attach this to any five millimeter peg you want. So that's the idea. It's actually it's scaled to fit much like like a 
Siege, Soundwave, and Sound Blaster. It's scaled to fit one of these guys. Let's take out Rat Bat, for example, just to continue with the uh, pink theme or purple. You could stick it in there to homage his old Power Masters. And they did actually release uh, his Power Masters. Wait, any. <laughs> Knock and Scar. I'm guessing they released them as repaints because they released them in the Generation Select line. Although I have I have not seen them, so uh, I don't know if I'll pick them up or not. Maybe I will just to complete the uh, double dealer look. So those are that, but he also has weapons his weapons were packaged not on him but of course being the arms dealer that he is he would keep the biggest weapon for himself it's only a goddamn giant gigantic missile that splits into two so there's a bit of detail on there there's a lot of detail molded in on this piece and it's also covered in five millimeter ports and pegs so you could just go crazy, mess around, attach whatever you want, do stuff like get other guns in, go crazy. It's also got this clip, which is literally I have not found a use for. Oh, no, it does have one use. Never mind. And also, he's maybe he's a fan of uh, the Empire. Given his, uh, given that kind of looks like the Empire symbol. But as mentioned, you can. Uh, and he's got four 5mm pegs on top, one on each shoulder, and one, as you can see. So you can attach it there. The promo shots have it here. Oh, every, every shot of it has it on that side. Although this shot has it on that side, on the uh, right side, so I don't know what's accurate. Oh, I didn't show off. You also have instructions that show it on the right side. And inside the box, you have a star map, which I might cut out. Might as well. And your uh, red decoder, which I I have one. I'm never gonna. I'm not gonna have a collection of one that's pointless. So you can put it in his hand, and I'll sh show you at this point. Yeah, that that top arm joint. It, it's a it's a case of your mileage may vary. This guy isn't even out yet in Japan. He comes out on the 26th of September, and I'm recording this on the 21st of September. I also got this guy off Amazon. So if you can't find him at your local toy shop, toy stop, toy shop, I'm trying to find the word. Then check there, I guess. He's also got all this stuff. So he's got this thing, to a pair of these missile-looking things. Uh, does this open? No, that's just a gunmetal paint app, but. He's got this thing, and he's got a really tiny gun, which I think is a bit redundant, but you can peg them in the gun. The instructions show you the gun and the, uh, the other thing, this thing go up here, and uh, this 
it goes on his back. So what you do, you flip this up, and there's uh, two tabs, and they go, uh, where is it, basically, uh, you attach it like that, and then you, uh, I believe it's downwards, yes, it's actually, it's, that's his, uh, preferred look and that just <laughs> that says whack walking through places hitting people and these these little things go on a port on each of his shins so he does have along with those he's got weapon ports on each uh bicep what ports on each uh shin he's got those uh, effect uh, posts, one on this plate, one on this shoulder, one here on this bicep, one on the shin. So he's got quite a few of them. Oh, one here. So you can hit, get impacted by a lot of bullets. And this is Double Dealer in his full, fully decked out robot mode. And yeah, he kept all the good guns for himself. So unfortunately, even the other arm, which doesn't droop as much, it still takes not much force. Oh, it takes a little bit more. But then it starts to go. You could, if you wanted to, give him the full... Full effect, which is so much weight, even then he can't hold it up. But yeah, it's best to put it on his shoulder or his other shoulder. So that's the robot mode. Now let's go into uh, well, we're going to go into vehicle mode. For one main reason, it's almost impossible to actually go from his uh, beast mode into his vehicle mode. You you literally have to go basically transform back into robot mode just to get all the parts in the right spots. It's a lot easier, dare I say, actually doable to get him from uh, vehicle mode to beast mode. So where are we starting? Well, we're going to start by holding the hands in. I forget. Oh. Basically, they have to fold in like that. And then you're going to, you can do it now. You're going to want to take the uh, arm and basically plug it into itself. There's a tab right there. If it'll actually, there we go. Tab in like that. Same thing on the other side. So those are out of the way. We're going to want to swivel the uh, leg. Fold that down. Swivel the other side. Fold that down. And then you're going to want to, uh, you can tab them together at this point. They tab in right there, and you can fold them all the way so that the these tabs on the what are the bottom where the the feet actually peg into the uh, slots in his thighs, which is uh, it's got you got to get past it. It's a little bit tricky. You just gotta. Kind of force it a little bit until you can uh, get it safely tabbed in there and it'll eventually peg in when you get the right angle you do have to mess with the inner knee joints a bit as well just to push them in just to get the right angle which will come into play in the other mode so you can remove those I forgot to remove them 
fold this up, fold this down, I'm going to rotate it, and you're going to tab it in. It tabs in two spots right there. That keeps that from going anywhere. And then you can, you didn't have to fold this up, I just did. And then you're going to want to take the uh, shoulder piece, not the, uh, you're gonna, not this piece, just the, the uh, main shoulder joint. And you're going to want to fold it all the way in. So it's like that and take the other one do the same thing and you're you're very close to done this mode is that simple you just take this piece you're going to want to take the missile put it back together and these two pegs are going to peg in to this this side of the uh platform although the the small one not really it kind of just rests there. It doesn't really friction peg in. And you're going to want to fold it all the way forward. And uh, basically, the, the only the only steps left are the kit are the uh, additional bits. So you're going to want to plug this piece into the shoulder ports. Wait, come on. And then fold that up to cover up the head. And you can fold these in. Or you can, uh, no, you can, I believe the instructions have them fold in like that. You take these, the uh, kibble, and you just plug them into his hand. Actually, the instructions say to fold that way. Or to put, post, plug it in like that. Plug the gun in. Uh... I believe the instructions, where do they say? Plug them in, because they're different for each mode, but I'll, you can plug these in wherever you want. I'm gonna plug them in here, because then they're in the, the way the least. And uh, that that is your vehicle mode. Your, uh, I believe it's just a, uh, what's it referred to? It's like a, Just, it's just referred to as a missile carrier, like a sort of futuristic, I don't know if you call it futuristic, but it's just, it's a missile truck. Uh, it's just a platform for a missile to, yeah, and yeah, um, it's not great. I mean, it's not terrible. I I like how hilariously his head is kind of just hiding back there. Like, don't look at me. You can't see me. And this panel is trying its trying its hardest to uh, add to the illusion. But no, his head is just right there. Um. There's really nothing exposed, nothing else exposed, nothing new in this mode that wasn't in the robot mode. It's actually covering up quite a bit of it with all the uh, shoulders and mess. It was sort of quick to transform, very, very much like feeling like a G1 toy with modern articulation, which isn't a bad thing, really. You when you you want a toy. That's equal parts uh, complex, I guess complexity and intuitivity kind of thing. Like, sure, it has a few moving parts, but it's all easy to understand, and the order of operations is easy to understand. And you want a toy that's playable. So, like, all the weapon ports. This toy is definitely, this gun mode, or this vehicle mode is definitely playable. I have one issue with it. One nitpick, and it's right there. Try putting this on a look. Try putting it on a flat platform. The front wheels might touch. The not all. It has a problem rolling, and when it's a car, it's it's just it's uh 
You can't see it, but I'm trying to roll it on the ground. It basically, it goes right, and here's the thing. If I try and adjust this, let's say, move this out of the way, fold it in, it's even, it's kind of worse. It, it sits out even more. I kind of have to, no, I can't get it to, I can't actually get all eight wheels to actually lie on the ground smoothly. Like, it just hits this every single time. And I'm sorry, but they should have... That's an oversight, in my opinion. It should not It should be able to roll. The main purpose of a car or any vehicle, a vehicle, is to roll. And unfortunately, it can't do that. We do have access to what's loosely referred to as the fourth mode which is literally not very much. Fold this down so it's a ramp. It also has a five millimeter port and the uh, ramp system. Fold the missile up and fold these down as kind of stud. And there you have basically the missile firing mode. I don't even consider it a mode. It's on the package. There's two steps. <laughs> it's not a mode. Anyway, moving on. Let's let's we're gonna remove uh, all the accessories, and we're gonna start the process of transforming him into his uh, beast mode. So you're gonna want to put these back, the shoulders back into place. And we're going to put this on the back for now. Pull this back up. Fold it over. Basically, you are going back to robot mode. But uh, you're going to want to fold these out and fold this piece down. You can. You don't have to fold that down right now. But uh, the arm has a slot uh, right, in, right there to tab into a peg right here. You basically have to put it at this that awkward an angle. You basically do the same you do the same thing on the other side. Fold that down. Fold them at this really ridiculous angle. I would compare him I would have compared him his vehicle modes to this. But it's honestly, the, how long this video is, it's going to take too long to transform them. And their vehicle modes are nothing alike. His being basically Blitzwing's tank mode and a jet mode. Actually, you can just fold the arms back in. And then, what are we doing from here? Well, here's the most, I'd say, annoying part of this transformation. Okay, you can take off the uh, these accessory bits I forgot to take off because they're kind of... If we just forget about uh, the you want okay so here's why the main reason why this is basically impossible to go from this mode to the vehicle mode these block pieces in the backs of his knees you have to get them to the position of basically inside uh, those slots in his knees and it's really, I don't know if finicky is the right word, annoying, because you have to get it at the right angle for it to go in. And, like, if it doesn't want to work, it won't work. Like, you basically, I'll have to sh I'll try and show you one. It's, it's, it is quite difficult to actually get them. Oh, come on. Ugh. Because they have to peg in, they have to tab in right in here. To just...
there. Basically, you have to get it to look like that compared to that. Only then, well, actually, only then will it be at the position to actually tab in. There, that's that one's tabbed in. I have to do the same thing. I have to extend it just to get the the joint is. Frustrating. Like, it feels like they were going for something similar to the, uh, you know, that, that, uh, Combiner Wars, uh, leg joint, the Combiner Wars Aerial Bot leg joint with the, uh, hinge. But, like, this is executed in the weirdest way possible. And as helpful as the instructions are, it's not 100% clear how it how it's actually supposed to get in there, given it's just mostly uh, black and white and then a bit of green. If I can find the picture. Which one? I apologize, but I need to get my point across. There. This picture right here. This step is supposed to tell you where that goes. Now, in my opinion, it just says, go in there. It basically just shows you an arrow going in there. That's not a good enough instruction. Because it is supposed to go in there, but... <laughs> it's a pain in the ass to get in there. Given all these moving parts and things... And like, I, I don't know if there's an, a, a, like a proper easy way to do it. And that's, I, that's the main reason why it's hard to go from beast mode to vehicle mode because you have to extend the legs back out of their, this position to like, you, you basically have to pull them all the way out, and not you don't have to rotate them, but you do basically have to. Oh my god. Basically, you have to go all the way out again just to be able to get there. And I'm not hamming this up for YouTube. I'm actually, like, trying to get this. It's... It's probably the most, because it, uh, uh, okay. Oh, that's not a, oh, okay. Maybe I'm wrong and you just have to apply enough uh, upward force. But that applying upward force, I don't like the feeling of that. So, there. That's how his legs are supposed to look now. So take this, and actually you're going to want to have it there. And this little section is going to clap, uh, clasp over it. And then you want to come to the back. As one of his talons falls off. 
It's not broken. It's just, in my opinion, not not the best design. So you want to fold out both of his wings because you want to get at this purple panel right here. Fold that out and then fold this all the way. Yeah, there's a bit of, uh, unfortunately, a parts. There's no way to get around that. The parts going to collide. Yeah, there's basically no extra space for his head to, yeah, parts are going to collide. And then this section will tab in right there, like that. You can rotate the bird head, or you can you can fold the panel back down, fold the bird head up, extend it out. And now you want to take these arms and plug them into his underside. At this point, you can fold the talons so they're in a flush to the ground position. You can, if you want, you can uh, open his beak and then fold out the wings, extend that piece, fold out the wing, extend that piece. And that's the basic uh, bird mode. I'm not kind of, I'm not sure what you want to call it. It's Double Dealer's Beast Mode. And it's basically just the car, but upside down, and with bird wings and feet. It literally does not have arms. It's about to have arms. <laughs> but it doesn't have... Eh. I guess it's wings, but... It is... Quite a big wingspan, though. Very nice. But this is this is also the problem in the car mode. These get in the way because of how they're engineered. But uh, if you want to do one final thing, where uh, how can you do this? Oh yes, you can attach. This piece to right here, sort of as a uh, tail feathers, and then I think, yeah, these, these just will go down, they're on ball joints. And now you have two choices you can go modern, which is uh, where is the uh, how do you plug the missile in? I think you just plug it in here. No. Oh. No. That doesn't go there. I let me give me 2 seconds. Although this video is well over 40 minutes. So he balances well if you've got a flat enough surface. Oh, it does clip in. Oh. That does clip in like that. Okay. <laughs> I didn't trust it, but uh, ah, that's. I don't like that. So that's if you want to be modern. Hold on. It doesn't fit if you put the. Where do you put the. Oh my god. Why am I screwing this up? Oh, what? No, no, no. 
Oh, it does go flat. Never mind. I'm too. Okay, so it does. And uh, no. I'm okay. And you can the, the back panel does have a port if you want to do it like that. But here's something the instructions won't tell you. If you want to be a stickler for G1, and I know some people probably do, give you and also if you want to be uh, funny, except that's not how that works. I'm trying to, why is this? Oh, because it's not telling you to do that. It's, I get it. You can attach the bird thing up there or attach the gun like that. So that's more, that's, Modern. Let me slide the piece back in. As I said, G1. <clears throat> G1 accuracy. You can leave this tabbed in here. Pull that down. Or take this. And you can have a bird with a giant missile penis. If you so desire. Yep. G1 accuracy. All up in this. And you just take the rest of the guns... You could plug them in wherever you want. Plug one in there. Uh, they also, the instructions just tell you to plug them into the hands in this mode as well. Because the instructions are boring. Plug these again wherever you want. Plug them into the sides. But, uh, I guess there is a smidge of articulation in this. Besides this mode having a massive, massive butt and a massive, well, I've already said it. And the bird head has a swivel at the neck, a double hinge for mostly for transformation, but if you want. He can go all the way down and look at his giant penis, being like, whoa! That Viagra hit fast! You also have the teeth molded in. Oh, I hit the... You have teeth molded in. Unfortunately, he's got dark eyes and, uh, from what I can tell, no light piping. And um, there's no real posability in the light. Uh, if you want to call, you can have that as a joint if you want. And this, these little purple talons. 
Also, his wings are on ratchet joints. The only ratchet joint is at this connection. But you also have a swivel and a hinge. And some, some nice molding in them. But, uh, yeah, this... this uh, I'd say this alt mode is G1 accuracy for the sake of G1 accuracy. Let's put this back like g1 accurate to a fault i guess is the best way to say it it's basically about as poseable as a g1 beast alt mode which is really unfortunate it's cool it's very chunky it is body is just a brick basically it's a brick that's exactly what it is it's a brick with some beast mode bits on it and then i can kind of see why they uh sort of futurized him into more of a jet mode the only really thing he has that like this guy has that's reminiscent of his act like this well, his, this guy's head is incredibly accurate to begin with. But it also has light piping, which is unfortunately a plus towards this toy. This was one of the ones I, like, I, when I start, like, one of my first ever reviews. But the, uh, that, that, that thing is supposed to represent this head. Which comes close, but so uh, final thoughts on Double Dealer. He's better than that guy. He's he's better than his Thrilling Thirty version, which really isn't hard in a day and age like 2020. Um. He's unfortunately not great. He's good. But I find myself, I find too many nitpicks when I look at this guy. Like, compare him to the other others, leader class toys released. Uh, Optimus, the best Optimus we've seen at, at this price point in forever. Uh, friggin' a really, really good Astro Train. Friggin' Shockwave. I, I, unfortunately, I think this guy is at the bottom of the barrel. Which, of a, a barrel that is amazing, he, it still makes him good. He's not great. I wish he was better. Like, I don't know what they could do to make him better. Like, have more articulation in this mode, but this mode is just hampered by its design. Really is the problem. The design of Double Dealer is the biggest problem. The fact that this bird mode really can't, it can, it can perch. It can sort of perch. Barely. There's, there's, there's way too much stuff in the way. Which is really unfortunate. It feels like Double Dealer has gone too much with the uh, weapons. Like he, yes, he kept all the best weapons for himself, but I think it's a bit like he can sort of do that. Let me see if he can actually sit like that. Sort of. He he's a he's massively back heavy, but and the car mode is again kind of ruined hindered by the design these wings are such a like they're nice to look at but design wise they're kind of a pain in the ass would i recommend double dealer yes because he is he's a cool toy but unfortunately he's not on the the upper tier of uh, Earthrise toys.
I'd say he's somewhere in the middle. It's really, it's a cool idea that they gave us a modern G1 style double dealer. And I don't know, maybe they can get some repaints out of this mold, but also these is lugs don't even tab in. Like trying to look, there's no place I see that they actually could they tab into. Like they don't tab into the main body. Like the more I look at it, the more nitpicks, the more issues I find. The more, the more I want to love it. I want it to be my new, my new favorite. But because Double Dealer was one of my first reviews, so there's a, a little bit of uh, some, some, what's that word? Sentimentality about it. But he's unfortunately not. So if you're looking for him, like, I'd pick him up, but maybe wait for a sale. Although, given how rare or how infrequent Earthrise releases have been, you should also look at the inside of his mouth. You might not get another chance, like, out, like, at retail, like, if you want them, you might just have to pick them up online like I did. Even then, like more nitpicks, like I could, I didn't even comment on how there's no, there's no silver paint on the wheels. The, the accessories besides the missile are all kind of just boring, flat black plastic. They need, uh, like this thing has some paint, but like these things, they deserve something. They're kind of boring. But, I think I, I think I should stop now before I. <laughs> All right, I think yeah. He's. I've said all I could say. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. I think this is one of the first times I've been. I don't know if this is an overly negative review, but I think this is the most negative I've been in a review in a long time, and especially of a leader class toy. Leader class are expensive. Freaking $69.99 Canadian. Buy a video game for that price. Video game such as this one. <laughs> Until next time, this guy is definitely weird, and you should definitely keep it weird. Bye.